Welcome everybody, we're gonna be doing something new in this video. I am so excited. I decided to wear white today, which it's kind of blinding, don't really like it. So sorry if you can't even see, because I don't know how you're even gonna click the subscribe button if I'm blinding. Claire, I swear, I've been happily married for 27 years, since birth. This episode, we're going to be taking a look at GraphQL, the bare basics, getting it in your project and making requests to a GraphQL endpoint. Now, what in the world is GraphQL? Well, it's an alternative to a REST API. So with a REST API, you will make individual requests with different methods and get the appropriate data back. With GraphQL, you have a single endpoint and you can customize what you want on the front end. Taking a peek at the GraphQL website, it says a query language for your API. So if you're familiar with say SQL for databases, well, GraphQL is kind of like that where you can ask for what you want, but you're going to do it from the client instead of structuring those query languages in the back end to the database. If you have relationships in your data, GraphQL can work with those very easily because it will basically create those relationships in a graph-like structure and you can grab the initial data and then grab nested data, which would be connected to the original data. So not only would you be able to grab the customers in a single request, you could also grab all the customers orders in a single request and get that in a single structure back. You can also customize exactly what attributes you want returned. So let's say it's giving back the customer's address. You don't need that for any reason. You could just delete that specific field from the query that you're sending to the server. The end result of this is that you're going to have one API endpoint, which is typically slash GraphQL, and then you just modify the request that you're sending to that endpoint to get different data. Now you can find GraphQL in a lot of different locations, front end and back end. So when you go to learn more about it, you'll find there are a bunch of different languages supported. And even within JavaScript, there's a bunch of different clients that support GraphQL. Notice so that these are split in two sections. So we have client code, and then we have all the way at the top here, server code. So this is a connection where you have to set up GraphQL in a server environment if you are managing your own API, and you will have GraphQL on the client to work with that back end. Starting out, we're just going to worry about the front end and consume an already existing API that's out there. So what we're going to do is just scroll down to the client section and figure out which one of these we should use. Now we're actually going to just use the Apollo client, which I believe is one of the most popular. Another really popular one is Relay, and there's some other ones on here, Urkel, I believe it's pronounced, and a couple of others. So yeah, it can be pretty overwhelming, the number of options, but the important thing to know is that it's all built on the GraphQL query language. So if you understand that language, then you just write the same style of queries, regardless of what client software you're using. So we will get started with the Apollo client, and we are going to use an existing GraphQL endpoint out there, which you can find at api.spacex.land slash GraphQL. This is going to bring up a visual tool called Graphical, and all of the different queries we might want to execute can be done from this single URL. So we can hit play with the default example here, and it will display all of the data that we requested. Notice that we have a lot of nested data. So for example, we have the mission name, which is just a single value, but then we have links, and links is actually an object with multiple properties. Coming up soon, I'll show you how you can do this for your own backend, but for now we're just going to use this SpaceX example because it's pretty comprehensive and gives you a lot of good practice. This will allow us to focus on the front end before we have to worry about the back end. The query is completely modifiable, so what we could do, for example, is we could remove this article link if we're not interested in it, and now it's no longer going to contain that in the response. You can also see the explorer over here, which will have all the different attributes we can retrieve, as well as how things are connected. So as an example, we could select rockets, that's going to add it to the query, and then we could select a few of these different attributes that we might be interested in, make a request, see if anything new is returned, Scrolling through here, you can see somewhere in here, maybe rockets. So here is an example of that response. So we have the boosters, company, cost per launch, and the country, which is exactly what we requested over here. This gives us back a single JSON response, which is very friendly for the front end. And we don't have to worry about making 20 different API requests and managing that data on the front end. We could just make one and get anything we need. So let's get started creating a React application to consume this GraphQL endpoint. We will jump over to the terminal and change directory to wherever you want to put this code. And we will say npx create 
React app. And we'll just give this a name such as GraphQL. And we'll go with the template of TypeScript, which we're going to continue to use. Hit enter. This is going to create a new React app in this GraphQL directory. And we'll say code GraphQL. From here, we can open a new terminal, which I will prefer to use over the one we just had open. And from here, we can now go into our source code and clean up some of the stuff we're not going to be using as we've done in previous videos. So we'll keep this one, but we're not going to need the logo, the test file, the web vitals, or the setup tests. And then going into each one of these index.tsx, we're not going to need that right here. And we're not going to need this section down here. Next up, we'll go into app.tsx. We're not going to need the logo, so we will remove this line and this line, and then just clear out this component to just have the div. Next up, we will just remove any of the CSS definitions just so we have a completely fresh application and also index.css as well. That should be everything. And now what we can do is we can install any packages we need. So I'm gonna zoom in because it's pretty tiny. So we will go ahead and say npm install, and we're just going to go off of the docs here. So npm install at Apollo slash client GraphQL. So we need GraphQL as well as Apollo, which is the client that we're using. And we're going to write some code in index.tsx, which is going to surround our entire app. So first we're going to do some imports. So we'll say import from at Apollo client. And the imports we're going to need are Apollo client, in-memory cache, Apollo provider, and GQL. So let's type this out real quick. So Apollo client, in-memory cache, Apollo provider, and GQL. These are what we're going to need to set up everything inside of index.tsx. Now we have to create an instance of a client and we do that using this Apollo client here. So we'll say, let client be assigned new Apollo client. This will take one argument, which is going to be an object. And inside of this object, we're going to need a cache and you can see some tips down here and a URI. So we'll start with the URI. So we'll say URI and set this equal to some value. And then we will say cache and set this equal to some value. So for the cache, it's actually going to be a new in-memory cache, which we imported. And then the URI is going to come from that endpoint we've been using earlier, which is api.spacex.land slash graphql. So we will paste that here and save. Now the docs are going to show us how to do this in JavaScript and then how to use the React equivalent, which is to use a provider and then inside of whatever component using a hook use query. So let's start by just creating a simple query inside of index.js to confirm that we can get a response from the server. So let's go back to our code and after we have defined client, we'll say client.query and this is going to have a dot then, which we will just console log the result. So we'll have a parameter result and we will console.log result. Now the actual query takes one argument, which is going to be an object. This is going to require a query property. So let's go ahead and expand this out and start typing query. And this part's kind of interesting. We're going to create a string and prefix it with this GQL, GraphQL, like this. So GQL, backtick, and then our entire query is going to go inside of these backticks. So going off our graphical example, we can copy this. However, I'm not going to want all of this. So let's just actually copy these first few things such as this here. And I guess I'll grab some nested data too so we can see what that's like. So we'll grab these here. So I'll copy that and paste it here. And now I will just copy these closing curly braces which are defined at the bottom of this query so that we can close off our entire query. So I'll paste those there. So now we have an opening curly brace paired with this one. This one is paired with this one. And this one is paired with this one. So everything seems closed. We'll save and we will start our server. npm start. Taking a look at the browser, we should see the data response here. And you can see inside of the data property, we have launches passed and a bunch of objects inside of that array. So congratulations, you've made your first GraphQL request from a React 
client. However, we're not really doing this the React way, which is to use the use query hook. So let's figure out how to do that now and put it inside of our app component or another custom component we could create. We will use this Apollo provider to give access to the client variable throughout our entire application by defining it right here around app. So we did do a video on contexts in this series. So if you need a refresher, you might want to check that video out. But what we will do is we will define an Apollo provider and set the client value to the client object we defined earlier. Then we will take the closing tag and move that to after app. Now we can access this client inside of app and anything defined inside of app as well. This is basically going to be accessible everywhere. So let's go ahead and jump into app and we'll just define some imports here. So we'll import use query and GQL from at sign Apollo client. And what we can do now is move our query from index.tsx into app.tsx. So we're only going to need everything from the GQL and then we can cut that and get rid of everything else including this then down here. So a lot cleaner on this end. And we will just assign this to something over inside of app.tsx. So const get data as an example, and then we will paste that value here and end it with a semicolon. And now we can use this custom hook down here inside of app. So we'll say const, and this is going to have three values we care about, loading, error, and data. And we will say use query passing in our query, which we called get data. To confirm this is all wired up, we're going to create a use effect real quick. And inside of here, we can just console log all three of these values. We can probably just leave the dependency array empty. So any state changes will trigger this and we'll just import that from React. So import use effect from React. Now taking a look at our site, let's clear this off and do a quick refresh. You can see these values, false, undefined, and then the actual data, which is the array. So far so good. This is making me happy. Now what you can do is you can just display this down in the return. So we'll say, if data exists, we will say data dot, and taking a quick look at our data once more, it is launches past, so data dot, launches past dot map otherwise we'll return null and inside of this map we will define a quick callback function which will just return let's say a paragraph with and the parameter we'll just call it launch and I'm kind of ignoring TypeScript for a moment I know not really getting the true value but whatever return paragraph and inside of here we will say launch dot and taking a quick peek at the different properties, we can just do mission name. So mission underscore name. Giving that a quick save, taking a look at our site, and there we go. We get the first 10 mission names from our GraphQL query. Adding some TypeScript stuff in, we'll just go ahead and copy one of these object examples and bring that over into our code and create a type up here. We'll just say export type launch and we will paste this structure and then we will just modify it to have the types instead of actual values. So this is going to be a string. The date, uh, I think I'll just go with a string for now. And then launch site is going to be an object with a property that is of type string. Saving this and we should now have that typing so we can say this is of type launch and mission name is a valid value, but we can also include other stuff such as launch dot date local. Saving now and you can take a look at the site and you get those times. Yeah, not the prettiest thing in the world, but just going in and throwing in that TypeScript type so that we can know what to expect for uh, the different properties down here. Ooh, that was a lot of information in one video. We're going to be continuing GraphQL stuff for the next couple of episodes, so I'm pretty excited about that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if this is your first time using GraphQL, then it's probably an interesting and exciting new endeavor. I personally, you know, have known of GraphQL and I've heard people talking about it, but I've basically ignored it for the last few years until recently. So I'm glad that I'm finally taking that step to 
pull GraphQL into my projects and get experience with it. In the next episode, we're going to figure out how we can add GraphQL to our backend so that we can use GraphQL in our front end with our backend. So that way we are in control of the entire process beginning to end. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video and be sure to subscribe.